Welcome to ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Few sights are as welcoming as the sun-bleached beaches of Maui. With warm, gentle breezes and deep blue water, it's an idyllic locale for one of college basketball's most renowned tournaments. Sit back and relax as Feast Week tips off from the tropical paradise in the Pacific. Civic Center. It's ESPN's coverage of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. We begin with Colorado versus Gonzaga, game one of our Monday feast. Coming up later today, it's Chaminade in Maryland, Cincinnati and Vanderbilt, and Arizona versus Wisconsin. I'm Carter Blackburn with Jimmy Dykes, and we welcome you. Aloha from the Lahainic <laughs> Civic Center as we get the Maui Invitational started. Usually, Jimmy, you look at who's in the Maui Invitational. There's a defending national champ. There's a number one ranked team. Different field this year, but still some quality teams. Only two teams currently ranked in the uh, USA Today Top 25 poll. That's Vanderbilt and Maryland. That's a little misleading, though. I think come Selection Sunday in March, there will be five or six teams out of this year's Maui that will be in that bracket. Uh, as always in Maui, there are high-quality portfolio wins to be had on the island. We begin with Colorado versus Gonzaga, and here's our star watch. Well, a couple of guys that can really score the basketball, Corey Higgins from Colorado, averaging about 23 points a game right now. One of the better scores and better players in the Big 12 that the nation doesn't really know about yet, and Matt Bolden, last couple of years, has deferred to the other stars for Gonzaga, like Pargo and Day, but now it's his team, and he has embraced so far being a star. This is the Gonzaga team that is battle-tested. Starting lineup for the Colorado Buffaloes out of the Big 12, a team who finished last in the Big 12 a season ago. They're hoping that junior college transfer Marcus Relford can add some punch along with Burks. Higgins, the leading scorer from a year ago, Dwight Thorne the second, and Austin Duvall. For the Gonzaga, Gonzaga Bulldogs, 2-1 and one on the early season. Goodson takes over at point guard along with Matt Bolden, Stephen Gray, Elias Harris, and Robert Sacre. Coached by Mark Few, now in his 11th season as head coach of the Gonzaga Bulldogs his 21st with the Gonzaga basketball program. Steve McLean is the acting head coach for the Colorado Buffaloes today. Jeff Bizdelic is back on the mainland dealing with a family medical emergency. And certainly we wish the best to Jeff Bezdelic and his family right now. Steve McLean, however, brings 27 years of coaching experience to that Colorado bench. When he was the head coach at Wyoming back in 2002, they actually knocked off Gonzaga in the NCAAs. He has a lot of confidence as an interim head coach bringing to this ball game. We tip off the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's, Colorado versus Gonzaga. What do you expect out of the Buffaloes and the Bulldogs? A little bit of a chess match, I think, will be early. Uh, Gonzaga opens up in man-to-man -man defense, so they will be chasing around the Princeton slash Air Force style that Colorado brings offensively. Three goes down for Marcus Relford. He is the junior from Chicago playing on his 15 in five years. He's bounced around the college landscape, but Colorado thinks he can make an impact. Well, he can step out and knock down perimeter shots, as Colorado bigs will be able to do in this basketball game. And what ratio will determine the success of Colorado? Sacre finds a cutting Stephen Gray foul. Where is Tom Gray? How's he doing? And Zaga 2-1, and one, but that one loss, one of the critical games in the early going in college basketball, when they went to Michigan State, the number two ranked team in the country, leading by nine until the Spartans pulled away late. But it showed that this Gonzaga team with a bunch of newcomers can play with anybody. It was a prize fight, and the prize fight went the entire 15 rounds, and uh, the prize fight took place on the other guy's mat, and that's a guy, Mark Few, that has never backed away from competition anywhere. That's why the Zags are one of the national names in college basketball and national factors in college basketball year in and year out. Full court pressure shown by Gonzaga. I don't think Gonzaga wants to defend that Colorado half-court man-to-man offense for the entire shot clock. So buy a little time in the backcourt, shorten the length of time Colorado has that ball. Higgins loses it, but a hand-check foul called against 
Gonzaga. Carter, early in this game, very important to watch, are Colorado's bigs able to bring out Sacre and Harris away from the basket and make them defend out on the floor, something that Mark Few is concerned with coming in. Key moments late in that Michigan State game or when the big men had to come out for Gonzaga, Spartans were able to take it to the basket. Basket, change the game. Higgins throws it away. Last touch by Colorado, Bulldogs get it. And we've touched on what Colorado's doing offensively. Now for Gonzaga, you'll see a mixture of man-to-man -man and zone offenses in this game because Colorado will have a mixture of man and zone as well. And it's different zone looks. They keep you off balance is the goal of the team in black. Goodson feeds Sacre, who misses in tight. Buffaloes bring it back. see the dribble action towards another perimeter player is usually a sign of an automatic back cut a lot of ball screen action difficult to chase this offense the entire possession Relford misses his second look from three he has the only basket for Colorado this is Bolden bringing it back for Gonzaga and Matt Bolden gets his first two of the Maui Invitational Cardi's really good I mean he's uh, you know probably one of the best players on the west coast if not in all of college basketball talk to Matt Bolden before the ball game He's in the best condition of his playing career as a senior, down to about 213 pounds. Doesn't have a jet or a burst, but has a very good controlled power dribble, which got him to the rim. Ask Matt about the difference of this team with so many newcomers, basically 10 guys who hadn't played Division I basketball before. He thinks this is a tougher Gonzaga team than what they've had in the last couple years. I think Sacre and Harris have both brought an element of toughness to this team. Maybe they lacked on the interior the last couple of seasons. Sacre was injured early on last season, and the Bulldogs missed that toughness. This is Gray for three. Stephen Gray knocks down the triple. If you are late recovering to the shooters of Gonzaga, they're going to measure that rim. The reason is Bolden at 6'5", Gray at 6'4". You have to be there on the touch. Gray has five of the first seven for Gonzaga. And a 7-0 run by Gonzaga after the early three from Relford in Colorado. Corey Higgins dumps it into the corner for Dufault. Passes on the three, takes it past Sacre for two. Dufault is a kid that played the four position last year, now moves to the five. That is the matchup that Colorado thinks they have an advantage. Goodson pushes it for Gonzaga and now whips it back out to Bolden. Elias Harris to Goodson underneath. Blocked from behind by Crawford. Colorado resets with Dwight Thorne second, the lone scholarship senior on the Buffalo team, giving it up. Corey Higgins pulls up. Tough two is no good. Yeah, it's a tough two. Good description. 22% shot. There's challenge twos. Bolden answers with a three. And a 10-0 run. Bolden has five. Watch the off-ball action of Colorado. The reads, the, the rim cuts, the on-ball screening action. Higgins on the back cut. Those are shots that Colorado has to make to get Higgins posted up, invert their offense. Lobbed to the backside for Harris. Foul on Colorado. Bolden's three gives Gonzaga an early 10 5 lead. Beautiful in Maui. 10 5 early start for Gonzaga. Five of those points from Matt Bolden, who Mark Few knows is going to have to play a bigger scoring role in his senior year. I think Matt is such a team guy and such a, uh, uh, it's just such a great player. He's a complete guard, is what I tell everybody. He can really pass it. He shoots it, he can drive it, he can rebound for his size, he can defend. Uh, you know, there isn't really any holes in his game. Matt says that freedom that Gonzaga gives its guards is what attracted him to Mark Few's system in the first place. Well, first of all, I want to comment on the necklace that Mark Few was wearing in the on-camera <laughs> interview. That was just beautiful. A lay, Jimmy, yeah, a lay. I don't know what it was, but 
You know what what Matt Bolden brings I don't think the NBA values enough a, a guy that's a high IQ player passes it handles it can stick a shot on you a powerful guy a, a low maintenance low turnover guy and uh, he'll be he's an intriguing player for NBA scouts to watch this year turnover first of the game for Gonzaga Harris gives it up stripped by Casey Crawford Colorado only two for five shooting I get some tough Gonzaga defense we've talked about Colorado's offense watch gun Zaga's defense pressure on the ball, but they're staying below the other four guys Which is exactly what you have to do against a Princeton slash Air Force slash Georgetown type offense stay below your man off of the ball Give it back to two falls on a good look from Keegan Hornbuckle And another Gonzaga turnover from Goodson to Higgins Corey Higgins Back-to-back -back Gonzaga turnovers leads to four straight for Colorado. Colorado can get you scrambled, Carter, defensively. They've already shown some 3 2 some switching man-to-man, -man, and as a result, Gonzaga just has to play ball at times against Colorado. Bolden's miss followed up by Olenek. <laughs> Kelly Olenek, the freshman from British Columbia, just north of Spokane, Washington. One of ten players on the Gonzaga side comes into the year with zero Division I experience. Higgins nearly loses it. Tomlinson there to help him out. Crawford for three. Bolden brings it back and splits a couple defenders to find Stephen Gray. Friendly roll for Stephen Gray. And I'll make the point again against the size of the wing shooters of Gonzaga. You must be there on the touch If you are recovering with a hand high in a seated position, it's too late Those guys can measure that rim and knock it down Gray makes it three for three from behind the arc for Gonzaga Tomlinson foul count the bucket Tomlinson the kid that started last year at the point guard spot from day one, so he's had a lot of experience on the floor, a lot of valuable minutes. That Colorado offense, keep the floor open, an open post offense is what it is, Carter, where there's not a true five guy sitting on that low block, so the drive opportunities are always built in place in this offense. Colorado, a difficult team to play. That's something that Gonzaga talked a lot about yesterday, both offensively and defensively. Just tough to match up with the Buffalo system. Yeah, especially early in the year, and you touched on it, Gonzaga so young this year. They began the year with 10 guys with zero minutes of Division I experience for Mark Few. So not only had they been tested by a, a toughness and an atmosphere at Michigan State, now they have an unorthodox style against Colorado. It's not easy to work through with short preparation. Olenek nearly turned it over. Bolden covered up by Higgins. Good D from Higgins. Man to man, and Gonzaga has not run a set or a pattern so far in this possession. Now it's down to nine. Into Sacre, the seven foot center. Fouled and rolls out. Now, how does Gray get the bounce on the three, and Sacre doesn't get it on the five footer? <laughs> This game one of the 2098 Sports Maui Invitational still to come. Maryland versus Chaminade, Cincinnati, Vanderbilt, and Arizona, Wisconsin. It's all part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. I love this kid at the free throw stripe, Robert Sacre. He's their pressure release right now when things get tough. That's a two-shot foul. He's mm -hmm. shooting the ball. But he's their pressure release against the scramble defense of Colorado that time Gonzaga their last possession Carter didn't have much offense working for him so in single digits on the shot clock he becomes their pressure release guy he's a seven footer great hands post him up and let him make a play pretty good background huh and his mother Leslie played basketball at LSU and dad Greg now athletic director at Southern in Louisiana Wide open Crawford for three. I think it's a gamble by Gonzaga to, to stretch their defense 94 feet as well as Colorado shoots the basketball. 
Buffs come in knocking down eight three-point shots a game at 49%, one of the hottest shooting teams in the country early. Goodson on the back cut, finishes. Dimitri Goodson has his first two. You see Mark Hugh back off of his pressure, maybe thinking the same thing. Not a good idea to be stretched right now against a hot shooting club from Boulder. Crawford off the give and go from Relford, but he misses in close. Olenek thought about the three and gives it back to Boulder. Now Olenek will take the three. First missed three of the game for Gonzaga. Another key for Colorado. Can they rebound well enough in this game and in this tournament to do some damage in Maui? There it is again in transition. Their bigs can step to the perimeter and dial it in on you. Olenek turned it over. Steve McLean has to like the feel of this game so far. The reason why the feel is the bigs for Colorado stepping out, doing damage from deep. Colorado and Gonzaga, part of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of the Feast Week presented. Colorado and Gonzaga, part of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of the Feast Week presented by Lowe's. As the season begins and unfolds, ESPN presents the next watch list, a list of 25 players, coaches, and programs that expect to make their mark this season. People talking about Cincinnati freshman Lance Stevenson since he was about 12 years old. He is all grown up now for sure, ready to explode on college basketball from Coney Island. Stevenson has all the tools to help lead the Bearcats back to the NCAA tournament. You can log on to ESPN.com for in-depth profiles on all 25 subjects and look for ESPN the magazine next issue coming to newsstands on December 2nd. A Lincoln High School in Brooklyn, New York. These are some of the other impact freshmen in college basketball this year. I've seen all those guys play either in high school all-star games or already this year on the college level. Certainly those five are in the early lead for National Freshman of the Year. They will impact their team. They will impact the national stage as well as anyone you can have your eyes on. Lance Stevenson, terrific young man. I actually ate some ice cream with him on the island a couple of nights ago, and the Cincinnati staff just continues to brag about how good of a person he has been so far early as a Bearcat. What kind of ice cream? Uh, I, I believe he was having little trailings and pecans. Mm. I'm thinking maybe you know, pistachio out here on the island. <laughs> Triple from Stephen Gray, air ball, and gives Colorado a transition chance with Crawford trailing. And the Buffalo is on top. Mistake made by Gonzaga's point guard, who has the ball right now, Villarino. As soon as Gray cranked up that shot, he should have been sprinting to the defensive balance. He stood and watched in no man land. Bowling ball pass into Sacre, who draws the double team, turns it over. Buffalo's in transition again. Nice give up, huh? Hornbuckle to Relford. Timeout Gonzaga as Colorado's taken a four point lead. Anybody ever had skunky beer? Clear and green bottles let in light, which can turn traditionally brewed beers skunky. Brown bottles protect better. Every Samuel Adams comes in a brown bottle, and we use higher six packs to protect it from the light. We put so much care into brewing the beer that we want to protect it. Inventors, do you have an idea for an invention or a new product? InventHelp can help you try to patent your idea and submit it to companies. InventHelp is America's largest invention company, with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call today for your free information. 7-0 run by Colorado to give the Buffaloes a four-point lead, and it's begun with Gonzaga turnovers. When you think about Colorado basketball, I've talked about their half-court offense, and usually you think that's a lot of patience. These Buffaloes will get out and run on you as well, but they run with a high IQ. That's a high IQ break, a three-on-two that turns into a two-on-one. And Steve McLean has to be very pleased with the effort and the execution early against Mark Hughes' Zags. And again, Steve McLean is the acting head coach today for Colorado because Jeff Bizdelic, third-year head coach, back on the mainland dealing with a family health issue. This is the second time already this year that Steve McLean has had to fill in because of health issues in the Bizdelic family. 
Another Gonzaga turnover. And Colorado wins the timeout. And there's always, in my opinion, eight to ten points a game decided off of a timeout. And coming out of one, Colorado scrambles their look defensively and gets a turnover. Now, can they make it pay off with a hoop? Five turnovers for Gonzaga. Goodson is on the bench. G.J. Villarino is now running the point for Gonzaga. In that open post offense, a lot of slip opportunities, backdoor cuts. Seven to shoot. Thorne gets past Gray. The drive and dish triple is an air ball for Tomlinson. Shot clock violation. Wyoming head coach who led Wyoming to four postseason appearances in his first five years. He was also head coach at Hutchinson Junior College. You know, and when you lose your head coach in the last 24 hours, like Colorado has, it's so important for the guy that steps in to have confidence. And Steve McClain now, he brings confidence to the hotel meeting this morning. He brings confidence to the locker room. He brings confidence to the huddles. And I think that's awfully important. Kids can feel and read whether or not this guy really feels like he can get the job done. I'm sure in that Colorado huddle, I'm gonna go listen to one at some point. Steve McClain has given a big voice of confidence to his kids, because he's been there. And Steve McLean is always very entertaining, pacing in front of whatever bench he's coaching. Native of Orient, Iowa. And Mark Few's concerns about 30 minutes before the ball game up in his locker room coming true early. The, the pattern, discipline offense of Colorado causing them some problems. And Colorado keeping them off balance offensively by changing up between man, switching man, and different zone looks. Freshman Burks brings it up for Colorado. Hounded Crawford at 6'9 because he comes to the game with a 6'1 shooter's mentality, a terrific pick and pop threat. Crawford with a pair of threes. This is the largest lead for Colorado. Bulldogs go into Robert Sacre for two. That's your pressure release. Again, when things are not going well offensively in this ball game, throw it inside to Sacre and let him take some pressure off of your perimeter game. Colorado in the half court. Alec Burks hounded by Bolden. Shot fake. And Dufault fouled along the baseline. Colorado with their pick and pop action from their bigs, causing Mark Few some problems. AC Crawford right here, number 34, with one bounce. That's a dribble handoff and a screen, and it just pops to the top. And this is a guy at 6'9 on the scouting report. You know he's a face the basket perimeter shooter. When he sets that ball screen, Carter, you must stay attached to Casey. And the half-court Higgins is going to bring it back out for Colorado. I need to be reminded, this is a Colorado team who won one game in conference play last year. Picked last of the Big 12 again. The hope for the Buffaloes was that they would be better in the 2009-2010 season. Obviously, you're seeing that they have that capability. Higgins on Bolden. Offensive foul drawn by Matt Bolden. It's a great one-on-one -on -one play by Bolden to stay down when Higgins went with a little bit of a stutter step up top. Matt Bolden stayed down in a defensive stance. Had he raised up just eight or ten inches, boom, Higgins goes by. 8.30 remaining in the first half. Colorado. Largest lead with six. Up four now. Into the post. Higgins is there to strip it away. Burke stops, loses it, gives it back to Gonzaga. Coverage of the 2009 O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic continues tonight as Wichita State takes on Pittsburgh and then third-ranked Texas versus Iowa, all part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Texas They're loaded up, aren't they? The Longhorns, Rick Barnes always defensively. They get after you to kind of let them down last year on the defensive end, but... They have weapons. They have as many weapons as anyone in the game right now. Bam. Triple goes in transition. This time it's from Alec Burks as Colorado continues to punish Gonzaga in transition. 
Sock Ray misses. Tip follow no good from Gray. Here come the Buffaloes again in transition. Tomlinson to Alec Burks. Back out to Tomlinson. Whip it around to Dufan. One more time. You mentioned Colorado won one game last year in the Big 12. But the nucleus of that group is back, surrounded by better players. That equates to a November of a hungry, hungry team as they come to the aisle. Double-digit lead for Colorado on Gonzaga. I've mentioned in this ball game the ability of Colorado's bigs to step out and drop them on you. Default can shoot it, Crawford can shoot it, Hornbuckle can shoot it, and that's a very difficult half-court offense to contain because of their on-ball screening action, and as you come off of me, the big is now stepping back, catching and firing, and that's exactly what Mark Few is up against. Now will Mark Few go to his zone in that timeout? Something to consider, but that's a danger. All right, let's talk Colorado here. We know that the Big 12 is top heavy with Kansas and Texas, the clear favorites. How much room in the Big 12 is there for Colorado to move? A, a ton of room. But behind Kansas and Texas, that's a great point. There's a ton of room because I'm not sure if it's going to be Kansas State or Oklahoma State. Uh, a Colorado team much improved. But I think that third spot through the 12th spot in the Big 12 is wide, wide open. A 13-3 run by those Buffaloes has a double-digit lead for Colorado against Gonzaga. Colorado enters the tournament 3-0. Those wins over Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Colorado State, and Texas Southern. So obviously, big step-up competition with Gonzaga. <laughs> Buffaloes have hit their last five three-pointers. Knocked out. Double-digit lead for Colorado in game one from Maui. Just another Monday morning in Maui. Feast week presented by Lowe's. This is game one of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational with Colorado taking a 10-point lead on Gonzaga. Six threes already for the Buffaloes. Jimmy Dykes was in the Colorado huddle during that timeout. What'd you learn? Well, exactly what I expected. Steve McClain was, was very calm, very assertive, very confident, and very precise in what he wanted from his club. He talked about the importance of all five guys rebounding the ball because of the size factor Gonzaga throws at you. That we haven't gotten a good shot. He said that tells you right now they're chasing us instead of defending us, and that's exactly what we want. He, I thought he was very good, just like I thought he would be. Shot clock winding down here. It's a block shot by Default, bringing Colorado back. Default wants it again. Now look at the defense by Gonzaga. A zone look, a matchup zone that traditionally has been great to Gonzaga in non-conference play, but this is a young team. This is the really the defense that Gonzaga has used this defense this year. And it is a gamble against a team that can stroke it from distance. Seven to shoot. Higgins for two. Rebounded by Burks off the glass. Is that the point that McLean was making there in the timeout? Well, he talked about all five guys to the defensive glass. What you like about Burks, he's the point guard, but when he slides through the two, he becomes a weapon on the offensive boards. Colorado six for its last eight. Default strips it, but then steps on the baseline. Colorado's come ready to play. They've come ready to play, and, and Gonzaga has to settle down right now. A again, the defense they're going up against has Gonzaga scrambled offensively. That's what it's designed to do. It's, it's been a 1-3-1 look, a matchup that uh, Mark Few is trying to battle through right now, a little bit of a 3-2 matchup as well, some switching man-to-man, -man. all designed to keep Gonzaga out of their stuff. Because when you break Gonzaga down on film and they can run their stuff, it's as good as anybody. Is that part of the function of having all these new guys early on in the season? Certainly. I mean, that's uh, Mark Few knows he's far, far from a finished product. But again, there's your pressure release. That, he could be the different Sacre if they continue to go to him. Sacre misses again in tight. They come the Buffaloes in transition. Gonzaga tries to set up in the half-court zone. Gonzaga now in their second possession of zone defense. We gave up an offensive board on the first possession. Mark Hughes got a lot of thoughts in his mind right now. How long do I stay in this? How well can we rebound out of it? Higgins for three. Yep. Seven for nine from behind the arc now for Colorado. 
That's the gamble when you go zone against Colorado. That's the position they put you in when you cannot defend their man-to-man. -man. You have to go zone, and they can start really lighting up. 15-point lead for Colorado. They turn Gonzaga over again. Back come the box. Wait for the call. Offensive. On Burks. That Colorado offense again, even their zone offense is an open post offense. All five guys outside the lane, so it's difficult for any zone to try to defend five shooters on the perimeter. An 18 to 3 run by Colorado has opened up a 15 point lead for the Buffaloes. This is early in the season, but remember Gonzaga a week ago went to number two Michigan State, yep. nearly won that game. We're leading early. Colorado is a team that was last in the Big 12 a year ago, one of 15 in conference play. Carter, I'll, I'll ask you, who's, who's playing harder in this game right now? I think the scoreboard will tell you it's the Colorado yeah. Buffaloes. I mean, sitting here courtside, you can forget get about all the defense and offense and pick and pops and all that. The black team has brought it. The black team has brought it to the court so far in the first half. And maybe we need to emphasize the emotions sometime that a team feeds off of in that locker room when the head coach had to fly back home to be with his ailing mom and the assistant coach steps up and all the stuff emotionally that Colorado has brought to this game so far, they are bringing the wood. Gonzaga's still in the zone in the half court. Colorado showing patience, five to shoot. Try the give and go, and the Buffaloes turn it over. Bolden lobs it ahead to Gray. Foul by Harris Tunks. I like the foul, though, by Harris Tunks. He's a 6'11 freshman, not counted on to play 25, 30 minutes, so he shouldn't be concerned about foul problems. Don't give up an easy two at the rim. You know, it's kind of fun, too, Jimmy, as we read all these articles and all the, and everybody says, well, we're going to be better than last year. Our expectations are high. So you read all of this stuff about Colorado, about, oh, it's going to be a different year. We're going to play harder. We're going to knock down shots. We're going to step up competition. Well, now it's no longer just reading about it. They're doing it. You know, when you have a guy like Corey Higgins, who's a junior, a terrific leader, has a great motor about him, he can kind of lead a young team, but it's always dangerous in November, I think, to go up against a team that has a lot of core guys back from a team that got smoked last year like Colorado because they bring an edge and they bring something to prove to the islands. Higgins misses that one. Gonzaga went nearly five minutes without points until those free throws from Gray. Another Gonzaga turnover. Higgins bounces it to Burks. Sacre there for the rebound, knocked out by Crawford. An early Maui surprise, Colorado by 13. Well, we got 3.48 to go before the break here in game number one of the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Gonzaga with all of its newcomers trailing by 13. Mark Few knows he'll have to do some teaching this year, but that's a two-way street. Listen. <laughs> they really have to listen at a high uh, uh, level because there's so much left for them to absorb and, and to learn, and, and it'll all be there for them if they just kind of listen. And there's Brian Michelson, who's administrative assistant, former Bulldog, doing some teaching. And that was like four minutes prior to game time. I think Mark brings up a great point. Uh, listening, not only in the locker room, but like right now, out, out of that timeout, not only did they hear it, but did they absorb it. And you think sometimes you take that for granted with kids, but they can look right at you in a huddle and go right out and, and you think, what in the world were you thinking about? So it's all those things that coaches work through in November. Who listens? Who absorbs it? Who can execute it? Boom. That's right what they talked about in the timeout. Get the ball to Sacre. Sacre gets just his second made bucket. He was one for five prior to the dunk. Goodson is back in to run the point for Gonzaga. Bulldogs have turned it over nine times already in the first half. 
And you wonder how Colorado will respond when things don't go their way over a stretch of a couple of minutes. So far in this ball game, the first 17 minutes, it's been all Buffaloes. Burks turns it over to Goodson. Dimitri Goodson floater. Gray there to help him out. Stephen Gray has 12 of Gonzaga's 27. Now Gonzaga comes out and delivers a couple of blows to the chin of Colorado. How does Colorado respond? The remaining two and a half minutes of this first half will tell you a lot about maybe their entire season. Long two from Marcus Relford. Gonzaga wants to push it. Great blow to no. Second chance. He's fouled. Coverage of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational continues. Freshman phenom Lance Stevenson in Cincinnati taking on Jermaine Beal. And now 24th ranked Vanderbilt. All part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's from the Lahaina Civic Center on Maui. That's a seasoned veteran Vanderbilt team. Ogilvy is a, is a star. Jeffrey Taylor is a, is, a, is a rising star for Kevin Stallings Club. They had a heck of a win on their way out here, like a lot of teams do, at St. Mary's. One of those late games that uh, maybe a lot of people don't realize. Vanderbilt went in there and won, and Jeffrey Taylor put on a show. Hard to believe A.J. Ogilvy is now a junior. I mean... When we talk about the impact freshman, A.J. Ogilvy was one of those. And blink of an eye, he's an upperclassman. And he did not play well on their uh, game at St. Mary's. And big fella has to play well in Maui for Vanderbilt to advance. Gray's 6 of 6 now for the line. He has 14 of Gonzaga's 29. So Stephen Gray, the junior, providing almost all of the offensive punts for the Zags. Mark Few likes his matchup zone because he's staying with it right now. They've given up some primer looks, but if he just cleans up some of the screening action coverage, he'll be okay. Holden there for the rebound off the Higgins miss. Walk, walk. Turnover number 10 by Gonzaga. Holden is out of sync, didn't he? And he's made some nice plays, but two or three times in this ball game, he's tried to drive with nowhere to go. And again, when you're bringing that ball up against Colorado, Carter, you're concerned with what defense are they in. You better make sure you understand that first before you try to make any type of an offensive move. Defensively, Gonzaga sticking with the zone in the half court. Higgins bothered by Goodson, turns it over. Holding on the run. Gray's going to whip it back out to Dimitri Goodson. Sacre should get a touch. Instead, Gray in the paint now finds Sacre. Robert Sacre fouled on the way to the hoop. So far, through my eyes, he's the one guy Colorado doesn't have an answer for. Because at the very least, he's getting himself to the free throw stripe at 7 feet, 250 pounds. And what I like about Sacre early. He's getting about 28% of his points on the year from the free throw line. And I love guys on scholarship, the Division I level, as a big, that are grading out about 30 to 32% of their points from the stripe. Catch that ball in the low block and power play to the rim type stuff. Doesn't make him play, does he? Yet only one for four yeah. from the foul stripe today. Continuing that out of sync trend for Gonzaga. Colorado's led by as many as 15. Gonzaga went five minutes without scoring in this first half. Colorado's best offense is when all five guys are facing the basket on the perimeter. Dwight Thorne misses the three. Heady play by Higgins nearly drawing the charge on Goodson. Into Sacre again on the post, off the double. Whip it back out to Bolden. Timeout Colorado with 27.6 left in the first half. So Steve McLean will draw something up for the Buffaloes on their last offensive possession. And Jimmy asked a couple minutes ago, how is Colorado going to respond when things don't go perfect for him? How do you think they've responded? I think they responded well. Gonzaga hit him in the chin a couple of times, but then Colorado came down, stayed in their stuff, stayed pretty patient, and they're still...
couple of times, but then Colorado came down, stayed in their stuff, stayed pretty patient, and they're still, you know, manufacturing the lead right now. I love the timeout by Steve McClain. For a guy that's been the assistant and now steps up today as the head coach, he understood, I got a timeout I can use right now to end this first half and make sure we get the shot we want to end this half. I think the message he sends his kids right now, at the very minimum, we take a 38-29 lead into the locker room. The shot clock has been turned off. Let's run our stuff. Let's take the last shot of the first half and not allow Gonzaga to have a momentum basket to carry up those steps in the Lahaina Center at halftime. Gonzaga's responded with a mini 8-2 run to get this back down at least to a single-digit ball game before the half. And they can close it out with a defensive stop. But they should be able to take the last shot of this first half with Gonzaga in this matchup zone. I don't see Gonzaga, even yet on film this year, scrambling it up or pressuring out of this matchup look. Tomlinson, the point guard, will run the shot clock down. Rather, run the game clock down. Step a big to the perimeter, let him measure the rim. Higgins takes it right past Foster and draws a foul on the seven foot five center for Gonzaga. Well, just a terrific understanding of where the shot clock is, who steps out as a switch, and they get exactly what they want by stepping a big to the perimeter. Foster, the 7-5 defender for Gonzaga, has to follow the big to Colorado on the perimeter, and that opens up the drive lane for CU. And the Buffs have had this impressive first half without Higgins doing a lot of scoring. Just six points in the first half on two for seven shooting for the guy who's their leading scorer a year ago. When you look at the timing that Colorado comes with, they leave 1.9 on the clock for Gonzaga to shoot one in at the half. That's just about as good as you can ask for when you're running a half-court set to try to finish it off. Double-digit lead again. Shot will not count. As Colorado leading by as many as 15 takes an 11 point lead to the break 40 to 29 in Maui as we send you to Carl Ravitch in the studio. Again from Maui, Hawaii, the EA Sports Maui Invitational, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's, game number one from the Lahaina Civic Center. And isn't it always fun about early season college basketball? You look at all these numbers, you look at the predictions, and then you throw them out the window. Colorado up 11 on Gonzaga at the half. What you think you know and what you really know, sometimes not the same thing, is that the first thing Colorado packed in their luggage to come to the islands was a three-point shot, especially from their bigs. Those dudes are four out of five from the three-point line. Relford uh, stepped out early and knocked one down. Different guys, Austin Default, Casey Crawford. Those were key shots. I think it set the tone in this ball game, and it started stretching Gonzaga on the defensive end. When the big can step out, all of a sudden the game changed, and uh, Colorado started getting good looks. Their on-ball screening action became more effective. Ultimately, Gonzaga had to go to a zone. But right now, the story of this ball game is the big guys from Colorado stepping to the perimeter, knocking down three-point shots. Crawford, eight points off the bench for Colorado to lead the Buffaloes in scoring. Meanwhile, Stephen Gray has done the bulk of the scoring for the Gonzaga Bulldogs, 14 of the 29 that the Bulldogs have scored in this game. Carter Blackburn with Jimmy Dykes from the Lahaina Civic Center. Game one of four today. Opening day of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational. Gonzaga gets the basketball first. What do you expect to see different from the Bulldogs in the second half? Well, right now they're going to have to manufacture a look against a different defense from Colorado. 1-3-1, one, one, a, a 50-Z defense for coaches across the country that use this. But it's the first look that Gonzaga has had against this 1-3-1. One, one. Gray misses his first look. To answer your question, I would think Gonzaga would want to establish that power position around the rim with Sacre early in the second half. DuPaul misses his first look at the second half. John Ball keeps it with Colorado. 
Sockrate only two for six shooting in the first half, five points and three rebounds. For a guy who's averaging in the first three games for Gonzaga's 16.7 rebounds a game. Thorne has trouble getting it in, has to use a timeout. 39 seconds into the second half, timeout Colorado. The 30-second timeout becomes a full timeout on the court. Join Sunday morning on the beach at the West in Maui, all of the head coaches presented with a little ho'okipa, some hospitality for all the wise citizens basketball coaches they each gave each other surfboards jimmy best guess as to who would be the best surfer out of the coaches here in maui mm. mark few maybe just because he's light on his feet <laughs> alec burks gets a left-handed two there to make it a 13-point lead for colorado buffaloes have led by as many as 15 in the game but if sock Ray can start doing that gonzaga can score inside they have to go to him and uh, it, the, the second option should be go to him again, and then the third option, someone else. Zachary, seven points now for Gonzaga. Against Michigan State, he had eight of the Bulldogs' first 11 in getting Gonzaga out to that lead at Michigan State last week. Good cut. Higgins finishes. One of the few times we've seen a Colorado big catch it on the block but it's designed for him to then become a back-to-the-basket point guard. Not a scoring threat. Sacre again on the pose. Wipe it out. He is fouled on the floor, so no shot. Foul on the floor against DeFault. His first. And Mark Few is sending the same message to his team that you and I are talking about to start this second half. Sacre getting a lot of looks, a lot of touches early. Holding off the inbound to come out 20 feet to get it. Holding off the dribble. Dockery again. Now he goes banging with the ball. Oh. Finishes. An 11 point lead, but if you're Steve McLean on that Colorado sidelines, you're concerned because Mark Few has told his squad get the ball in the hands of double zero inside. First four of the second half from Robert Sacre. As well it should be. Colorado working against the zone. This is Marcus Relford, the junior college transfer who could be an impact player for Colorado. Giving it up to Corey Higgins, misses badly. I talked earlier about Colorado getting the ball to the low block and on the touch right here, boom. He becomes a back-to-the-basket point guard and a hard basket cut by Corey Higgins. The bigs of Colorado aren't going to score with their back-to-the-basket. They are going to pass and carve you up if you give them opportunities. Default and Crawford showing good versatility in that Colorado offense. Higgins inbounds tipped away by Bolden, trying to find a cutting Burks. With five seconds on the shot clock. A quick hitter here for Steve McClain, the acting Colorado head coach, Jeff Vizdelic, back on the mainland dealing with a family health issue. Steve McClain has looked very comfortable in those head coaching sandals on the sidelines. Brooks turns it over off the inbound. They have really struggled to start this second half on their baseline out of bounds. Bolden finds Sacre, who's fouled from behind. Now this this game to me is getting ready to tighten up quickly because Gonzaga has decided Colorado cannot guard our big fella. Sacre has the first four points of the second half for Gonzaga. Now in his sophomore season, took a medical red shirt last year, had a foot injury, only seven games into the season. Says sitting out was like being outside the fishbowl. Gave him a new appreciation of what it was like to be on the court part of the Gonzaga basketball program that draws so much attention. That he didn't really understand what all that pressure was about. The importance really of Gonzaga basketball until he was kind of on the outside looking in. Yeah, Murphy talks about the Zag way of doing things and 
you know, you don't just get to play because you're a guy on the bench and, and you're a, a, a top recruit in high school. You have to earn your stripes. And I think that's part of the lesson that Sacre learned last year. They were 7-0 and last season coming out of Orlando with a healthy Robert Sacre. That was a huge loss. Could have used their, uh, his size against North Carolina in that NCAA. And he played all year. You and I both were talking yesterday with Dave Billis and Bill Raftery, who's out here with us as well. They maybe would not have had to match up with the Tar Heels in that tournament. Crawford misses from the baseline. Back come Gonzaga. Bolden lobs it to Gray. And because Colorado had to use a timeout early because they couldn't inbounds the ball, Steve McClain is going to keep those three timeouts in his pocket knowing that this thing is going to tighten up. 19 of Gonzaga's points from Stephen Gray. The next TV timeout doesn't come until below that 16-minute mark, so Steve McLean elects to just play through this right now. Casey Crawford answers with a tough two. Back to a nine-point game. Golden floater misses. Second chance for Gonzaga. Rebound from Harris, who's fouled on the stick back. I asked you in the first half, who's playing harder? I'll ask you right now, which team's playing harder? The team on the comeback trail. Yeah, exactly. they're, they're scrambling, they're running the floor, playing much higher IQ basketball on the offensive end. Right now, they have Colorado reeling just a little bit. Uh, Gray is a guy that, again, you have to be there on the touch. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, he and Bolden both. Measure that rim in a hurry. Harris gets the first free throw. Gray had a very disappointing shooting game in Michigan State. Only three for 14 shooting, only one made three against the Spartans, but he is a true shooter. He's going to keep launching it. And Stephen Gray has today with 19 points. Harris misses the second free throw. Down to an eight-point game. Colorado led by as many as 15 in the first half. Again, shooters all over the floor for Colorado. So this zone needs to be stretched out for Gonzaga. Tomlinson misses a top two. Bolden fighting for the rebound. I didn't like the shot by Tomlinson. I like your description of top two. I did not like the attempt. Thanks. Olenek shot fake. Finger rolls it in for the six foot 11 native of British Columbia. And that timeout, that next dead ball can't come quick enough right now for Steve McLean and the Buffaloes. They need a settling down huddle. I'm gonna go listen to it and see if that's what Steve McLean tries to accomplish. Tomlinson to a cutting Keegan Hornbuckle. Now Corey Higgins, floater in the lane, goes. Big two for Colorado. Just go make a play, huh? At some point in time in every ball game, you need your best player to just go make a play. That's what Higgins did. Higgins has six in the early going of the second half. Olenek swatted away by Crawford. Higgins again. And one. I thought it was a gamble of the dice for Steve McLean to not call the timeout. But he trusted his best player, Corey Higgins, to make enough plays to get us to the next timeout. Higgins stepped up and did it, and the Buffs are still up 10. Your face isn't flat. It has angles, curves, and corners. That's why Remington invented the affordable Pivot and Flex Technology Shavers. With necks that pivot, and heads that flex in all directions. And the new Remington 8-in-1 personal... Colorado versus Gonzaga, the first of four for the EA Sports Maui Invitational today. Coming up next at 5 Eastern, Cincinnati, Vanderbilt, followed by Chaminade in Maryland, and then Arizona, Wisconsin tonight, midnight Eastern time. Dave Odom was matching up against Vanderbilt just a couple years ago. He is now the chairman of the Maui Invitational, the former South Carolina and Wake Forest head coach. Boy, what a what a tough job for Dave, the <laughs> tournament director of the EA Sports Maui Invitational. But has the respect of, of, of all the coaches uh, across the nation in college basketball. And it's interesting when they would come into practice, they would seek out Dave Odom and shake his hand, congratulate him on 
being a part of this wonderful tournament. It was an interesting huddle with Steve McClain. He, he talked to them about defensively right now. All we have to guard is about 10 seconds because Gonzaga is playing really fast. So if you lock in for 10 or 12 seconds and rebound the basketball, we're okay. We plotted Higgins the last 90 seconds to step up and take control of the team for us, just like he did going into the timeout. In the second half, Corey Higgins, eight points in the first five and a half. A triple from Harris is no good. There's the rebound by Crawford as Colorado executes what its acting head coach wants him to do. So a couple of times now, Carter, in this game, Gonzaga has hit Colorado squarely on the chin, but the Buffs still standing in that ring. Crawford will screen for Higgins. Relford gets past the Linux and draws the foul against the crowd. Kelly Olenek. Relford spent his freshman year at St. Louis. He was recruited there by Brad Soderberg. Ended up playing for Rick Majerus. Transferred out of St. Louis. Spent a year at Indian Hills Community College. Now at Colorado. And you go back a couple more years. High school in Chicago. Prep school. Five teams in five years. A, a key signee because he's an older kid to blend with you know that freshman and sophomore class it blocks a lot of minutes Relford cutting through Tomlinson instead is going to flip it back out to Higgins the hot hand for Colorado Crawford goes to screen for Higgins draws a foul on Goodson before the basket Higgins was quiet in the first half, so Colorado built that 15-point lead without much from their leading scorer. Had only seven at the break, but already eight in the second half. Relford takes on two defenders and spins it in. Nine for Marcus Relford. Golden foul from behind by Crawford on the pick and roll. You know, it's interesting to watch Golden operate off of an on-ball screen because he doesn't have the speed that normally I like to see for guys on an on-ball screening action, so his execution of it has to be terrific. What I'm talking about, the timing. Bolden can't go too quick. He can't go too late. He has to get his shoulders and his rear end low when he comes off of that on-ball screening action because he lacks those jets that you really want for someone. Sacre gets it 17 out. He wants it again. Instead, it's Harris getting fouled on the way to the hoop. Elias Harris, who is a freshman, but not your typical freshman, 20 years old. Played on a high level as a member of the German national team. 2008, he was in the German Pro B League. So he's, he's been up against guys like Roni Turioff this past summer in the European Championship, so he's an older kid. Only got to the U.S. in mid-September. Mark Few really praises his learning curve. Misses the second free throw, but Gray tips it back out. Sacre stripped from behind by Relford. Zags hang on. Sacre taken down by Harris Tonks. Two-point takedown. Name, name another team in college basketball uh, as you see the takedown here just get the right arm and wrapped around Sacre but think about Gonzaga every year Mark Few loses guys that you never heard of before they became a Zag and replaces them with guys you've never heard of before they became a Zag you know I think he and his staff the continuity only losing one full-time assistant in his entire 11 years now at Gonzaga they identify well, they identify to their needs, the type of kids that fit their system. But they're just constantly plugging in the next, you know, Matt Bolden, Adam Morrison type kid. Bolden hard to the hoop for two. Seven for Matt Bolden leading Gonzaga. Back to within striking distance, down by nine. And Colorado has to stay aggressive. They have to keep playing hard, looking to score just like that. And that is way too easy. 
by Gonzaga's defense. Great look from Relford to Harris Tunks for two. Harris gets to the hoop. Timeout coming on the next dead ball. Man-to-man -man defense by Gonzaga on this possession. Haven't seen a lot of it since early in the first half. Colorado can run their sets now back to that Princeton Air Force style. Maybe a nice relaxing day down the hill on Kanapali Beach. Well, we got an intense one already. Game one of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational. Colorado with a surprising nine-point lead on Gonzaga. Everyone else may be on island time, relaxing time, but never Steve McLean. I think if you expect kids to play with a passion, why wouldn't you coach with that same passion? And, and everybody's got their own way of doing it. But I, I think I've always been that way. I think your kids you feel like you're working just as hard as they are. And at the end, that's what you want. Well, again, he's on the sidelines today because uh, Colorado head coach Jeff Bezdelic left the island yesterday to fly home to be with his ailing mother. And it's just a quick phone call from what Steve told me. Jeff called and said, hey, I'm heading back. My mom needs me. The team's yours. So a lot of trust between Jeff Bezdelic, the head coach, and Steve McLean, who he hands the reins to now for this tournament. And as Jimmy pointed out earlier, that 2002 win by Wyoming over Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament was the last time Steve McLean coached against the Bulldogs. Foul on Sacre. That is his third as he picks up his second just prior to the timeout and his third coming out, hedging on the screen. And if what is Sacre doing that far out on the floor defensively? If you missed the first half, the bigs of Colorado can flat out stroke it from three. So Sacre has to can flat out stroke it from three. So Sacre has to respect that on any screening action and get out there and be involved. Mark Few keeps him in the game with three fouls. Against Michigan State, Sacre picked up his fourth when Gonzaga had a nine-point lead. That was the turning point in the game. A moving screen called on Shane Harris Tunks. But you know what the problem was, Higgins. Higgins did not wait and show patience on an on-ball screening action. And I see that mistake time and time and time again. Summer clinics and camps, I talk a lot about that on-ball screening action. And that's one of the key elements of that offense. That offensive foul on Shane Harris Tunks is his fourth. What I'm talking about. The screen is not there yet. Boom, and look at Higgins go. So that is on Higgins. That's not on Tunk. Higgins has to be patient. Let the screening action get set. Bam, then go. Tunks checks out with four personals. Sock rate of Bolden on the post. Strip. Bolden recovers and finishes. Showed a little fight, didn't he? He showed a little fight. He showed a little walk. <laughs> Gonzaga fans here in Maui noticed. Tomlinson running the pick and roll with default. Colorado does not have three in the second half, seven in the first. Tomlinson. I guess their first three attempt of the second half, Colorado, and they were lighting it up in the first half. Just over 10 minutes remaining in regulation as Sacre turns and misses again. But that is the shot you want, I think, if you're Gonzaga. Mark Hugh felt like Sacre got pushed a little bit with a body underneath, thrown off balance. Under 10 minutes remaining in regulation. We'll get you the game time back up on the screen as soon as possible. Another offensive foul. This one's on Corey Higgins, his second. Steve McClain not happy with the explanation, but it is a second personal foul on Corey Higgins. Under 10 to go. Colorado leading by seven. Buffalo's led by as many as 15 in the first half. Robert Sacre 
catches it, spinning baseline, missing badly again. Sacre is going to get those touches. He needs to make Colorado pay. He's seven feet tall, 250 pounds. He needs to get himself on balance and start converting six feet and in that power part of the floor. Gray. Stephen Gray has provided the offensive punch for Gonzaga that's been missing from Robert Sacre. Four made threes, 22 in the game for Stephen Gray. It should be Corey Higgins' time for Colorado. They get him the ball on the high side of the floor. A little bit of a clear out. Robert Sacre is a pressure release on one end for Gonzaga. Higgins will be the pressure release on the other. Watch Stephen Gray start and go to the corner. Just a lack of awareness by Colorado defense. There's no screening action. He just slowly faded to that corner for a pretty clean look. This is the closest we've been in the second half. Four-point game. It was Colorado by 11 at the break. Colorado won one game last year in the Big 12. So their thinking process right now, I think, is critical. Do they really feel like they can beat Gonzaga? And not just one bad season for Colorado. They've lost 20 games in three consecutive seasons. Villarino fouled on the way to the hoop. Well, when you've won uh, percentage-wise right up there with Duke and Kansas, you've done a lot of things well, and that's exactly what Mark Few does. He's made an adjustment in the second half. I don't think he liked going against Colorado's half-court defense. So he has told his kids, let's start pushing that basketball. Their transition push has been much more effective and on purpose and on point in this second half. So they haven't had to go against that Colorado switching man, 1-3-1 one, one, and 3-2 matchup near as much. Many a rock checks into the game to give Robert Sacre a rest on the Gonzaga bench. So Mark Few going a little bit smaller now as the Bulldogs have cut it. Here we go, partner. Let the feast begin. Tomlinson bumped. Sophomore point guard from Sydney fouled on the floor. And that's now. 17 fouls against Gonzaga. One and one coming. Tomlinson, a, a coach's son. At, at times, as a freshman point guard, he was too unselfish. I would watch him play, and he would drive that basket, turn down layups to pass the basketball. And right now, the coach's son needs to convert from that free throw strike. Colorado needs every single point they can get now with 8.38 to go in this ball game. Buffs only three for five from the line. Make it four of six. Villarino brings it back for Gonzaga. This is Orat to Bolden. Switching man-to-man -man defense out of Colorado. Gonzaga has to recognize it, get to their sets. Harris to the hoop. Count it! <laughs> Harris and one. I like the play call from Mark Few right in front of his bench to isolate Harris and let him go one on one. This is a hard guy to guard in the half court as a freshman on the college level because he can step out and he can power dribble to the front part of the rim and elevate and make shots. Three point play from Harris. And at 57. Tied for the first time since it was 18 all. From 15 down in the first half, 11 down at the break. Nice Gonzaga's tied it at 57. 
But Dufault will have a chance to put Colorado back on top. Fouls on Villarino. Well, the slips are always a factor for Colorado. You're going to see an on-ball screen action, boom, and just slip to the rim. That's the danger when you go back to your man-to-man -man defense, Gonzaga, right now. You're back to chasing that Air Force, Princeton, Georgetown, half court defense. And there's a lot of things they can do that are very slippery to defend. Not making them pay, are they? Four for seven now, free throw shooting Colorado. Missing again, now one for five, free throw shooting this half. Bolden, the senior from Colorado, pulls it back out for Gonzaga. Ray's the leading scorer in the game with 22. Dribbles it off his foot. Who touched it last? Gonzaga did. Colorado ball. Even at 57, the feast begins in Maui. College basketball's leading comedy team will have all of games two and four today from behind a Civic Center. I, I love the emotion on display in this building with both Gonzaga and Colorado on the far side, slip right down the middle. And the emotion that Colorado brings to the floor in this game with their head coach, Jeff Bezdelic, back on the mainland with a, his mother who is taken ill. And how crazy is college basketball when Gonzaga can almost go and win at Michigan State, who we all think is a top four or five team, and now they're being pushed to the brink right now by Colorado, who's picked anywhere from 10th, 11th, or 12th in the Big 12. A great sport and a great time of the year. It's, it's great how you write it out on paper. Right? A team who's had three consecutive 20 loss seasons, not expected to be much better. Yep. Their head coach is in here going up against the powerhouse Gonzaga Bulldogs. And yet here it is, Colorado back on top with acting head coach Steve McLean leading the way today. Can Steve McLean, with 7.27 to go, convince his kids on the floor, on the bench, and even his other assistant coach, we can win this ball game. We can win this ball game. I think that's the most important thing Steve McLean can do for his team right now is convince them we can do it. We can do it. He's doing his best. Much needed free throws from Nate Tomlinson. He gets them both. Colorado back up by two. Gonzaga has not led this half. The clear out for Bolden. Gives it back out to Gray. Stephen Gray stops, flips it to Orak. Back to Dimitri Goodson. Goodson catches on the baseline. Seven to shoot, six to shoot. Goodson gets past Relford. Orak. Big three with one second on the shot clock from Manji Orak, freshman from Alberta. You talk about the great point guards that run through Gonzaga recently. Jeremy Pargo, Ravio, Blake Stepp, Dan Dickow, Matt Santangelo. And with the shot clock winding down, Dimitri Goodson understands I have just enough time to fire a... Get a big basket to tie this thing up. Great recognition by Dimitri Goodson, the point guard. Long two from Arap, so we're even at 59. Tomlinson back to the free throw line. They need the free throws now. Colorado in the second half started one of five until Tomlinson's made these last three. So Nate Tomlinson, the sophomore from Sydney, Australia, led the team in assists last year as a freshman, has made four straight free throws to put Colorado back up by two. Sacre with three personal fouls. On that bench, he should be checking in, I would think, in the next minute to 90 seconds. Bolden fouled on the way to the hoop by Higgins. And here comes Sacre. Mark Few has gotten this game down to 6.31 to go. They trail by two, and his big comes back in with two fouls still to give. Now, can Sacre have the impact in the last 6.31 that he hasn't had? 
in most of this basketball game. He has 10 points, but it's taken four for 10 shooting, yeah. and he's only two for six from the strike, where he's usually good. He really hadn't made him pay, has he? Because Gonzaga, they did a great job of designing the offensive touches for Big Fella, but he really hasn't put a knot on the head of Colorado when he's had the opportunity. Can he do it now with 6.31 to go? Holden now into double-digit scoring as he gets them both. Substitution for Colorado as Crawford checks in for default. Crawford has 10 points off the bench for Colorado. Even at 61, less than six and a half to go. Into Higgins at the high post. Well, Pinballing yeah. it around in the half court. Well, you're going to have to have some courage now to take up and the slack and knock down some open three looks for Colorado. Cannot be hesitant. Play this game to win if you're wearing a black uniform right now. Higgins, tough two, won't go. Who touched it last? Bolden did. Colorado keeps it with a fresh shot clock. And they have had problems inbounding the ball. Colorado has on their bobs, their baseline out of bounds. What should we do? What five, Robert? With a new shot clock at 35. I don't, I don't call up a scoring play here off the out of bounds. I safely get it in. Now run your stuff. on the wing. It's a screen from Hornbuckle. Fouled on the baseline just as he loses it. Coverage of the 2009 O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic continues tonight with Wichita versus Pittsburgh and then Texas versus Iowa. The third-ranked Longhorns get an early look at Avery Bradley, the impact freshman for the Longhorns. Built to defend on the college level from day one is Avery Bradley. And you look at those brackets and you think, ah, Texas-Iowa, probably not the best of games. Kind of like Colorado Gonzaga looked about four hours ago <laughs> right. when we walked in here, right? You told us from the get-go, Jimmy, you said there's going to be some important wins in Maui for these teams. Sure. How critical would this one be for Colorado? Uh, as a huge portfolio win. I don't see them as a severe threat to win the Big 12. But again, that Big 12 is so wide open in that 3-12 to 12 spot. Goodson gets out of the pressure. A lot of contact, wasn't it, on Goodson, not Paul? Mm -hmm. And now there is a whistle. Gray fouled by Dwight Thorne, the second. And Mark Few really was so vocal about the contact on Goodson that went uncalled. Maybe that played into the mind of the officials on the next contact. They're human. Hmm. So Stephen Gray goes to the free throw line. Leading scorer in the game, he has 22. I like my analysis of the officials. Mm, they're, human. they're human. Did yeah. you know that until you yeah. worked with me? Yeah. Working with no, me, it's... you will learn a lot of things now like that. Thanks, Jimmy. That was, that was a good <laughs> basketball point. The referees are human. <laughs> Lesson number one in the Jimmy yeah. Dykes basketball Just school. Start keeping a journal now. You'll go to a whole other level. Maybe I can start tweeting about it. Yep, I've started tweeting. I'm into it. Those free throws for Gray give him 24, a new career high. It's interesting to me that Gonzaga extends their pressure because they got burned in the first half with some perimeter shots. And they extend it now in the second half for the first time, and they foul out in the open floor. And I think their half-court defense has been really good the last five or six minutes. Sending Dwight Thorne the second to the line for two shots. Now think about what Dwight Thorne the second has been through in his Colorado career. When he came in as a freshman, there were nine players as part of the class, seven from scholarship players. He is the only scholarship senior left on the Colorado roster. Three straight 20 loss seasons, and he's the last man standing. Tells you a little bit about his DNA, though. To me, it does. The guy that perseveres when things aren't well. He has the stick to itiveness to hang in there, be a leader. And right now, he has his team with a two-point lead with 5.23 to go against, I think, one of the very, very good teams in college basketball this year, Gonzaga. Thorne on pace to get his marketing degree this year as well. Goodson dribbles out of the trouble from Tomlinson. 
Nine seconds to shoot for Bolden, who gets bumped on the hard head from Crawford. Fourth on Casey Crawford. Boy, Bolden did a great job, didn't he, of, of going and, and going and, and directing the contact himself. He delivers a blow, Bolden. Attack the hip, boom, attack the hip of the head's defender. Put it in the hands of the official how he views it. Nine times out of ten, the on-ball handler is going to get the call. Bolden gets the first. And he deferred to Austin Day and Fargo last year. Height felt at times. He cannot defer this season for Gonzaga to be at their best. He can't defer the remaining five minutes of this ball game if Gonzaga is going to win. He has to embrace being the guy. Even at 65. Harris gets the block. Back comes Gonzaga. Sacre wants it on the post. Bolden pulls it back out. Pick and roll. Good recovered defense from Colorado, but then they foul. Higgins fouls Bolden. That's number four on Corey Higgins. What well, a big time block, wasn't it? Because Relford had a clean path to the rim. Catches on the baseline, and he does the right thing going up with two hands. But Harris just great timing. He didn't leave the floor too early, and a big block to preserve that tie, which is now a one point lead. Gonzaga's first lead since there was 12.47 to go in the first. Bolden still perfect from the strike. Bulldogs up by two. Gonzaga with all of their success, all of their travels across the country, already playing at Michigan State. Gonzaga feels like right now they can win this game. Does Colorado feel like they can win the game? Bolts. That's the question. Turn it over, Goodson to Gray. for three. Three timeouts. Steve McLean has the offense right in front of him. You see him circling at the top of the screen. He knows the look that he wants against this matchup zone of Gonzaga. Burks, baseline J to even it again at 67. Good patient offense. Gray, can't answer, loose ball, won by Colorado. Look for Crawford. Colorado has still not made a three in the second half after seven in the first. Timeout, Gonzaga. 30-second timeout with the game tied at 67. 3.23 to go in the second half. So the Buffs through the first big punch of this ballgame, getting out to a 15-point lead. Gonzaga's now come back to tie it even at 67. Now the question is, in the last 3.20-plus, does Colorado have enough to finish it? Well, enough to finish it, and mentally, where are they right now? Do they revert back to, you know, we're the, we're the team that only won one game in the Big 12 last year, or do they think we've grown up? And we come here with an edge about us, and we're going to deliver that edge to Gonzaga with 3.23 to go. I, I think that's the story in this game right now. Mentally, where is Colorado? I know where Gonzaga is. They expect to finish off this ball game and win it in that huddle with all the high-powered, high-profile pressure games that Mark Few and his guys have been through they expect to win emotionally where is Colorado now because they have played a terrific basketball game with their head coach on the mainland probably watching Steve McLean has done a great job stepping up as an interim head coach but now the pressure is on Colorado can they finish this game off and pull off probably the biggest win in Jeff Bezdelic's you know tenure at Buffalo although he's not here on the island with them well, for Gonzaga, they have needed the newcomers to step up, and they'll need them all year. And certainly, as this game's gotten tight, those newcomers have been big, beginning with Elias Harris, the freshman from Germany, with his three-point play. And then Manji Arat. With a long two, with one second on the shot clock, to even the score again.
Those two of the ten players for Gonzaga who had not logged a minute of Division I basketball before the season began. Again, Gonzaga replaces guys you never heard of prior to being a Zag with guys you've never heard of prior to being a Zag. But the streak continues. Matt Bolden, the senior from Colorado, Highlands Ranch, Colorado, went to Thunder Ridge High School. Man-to-man -man so Gonzaga can run a multiple set offense and get exactly what they want, and they want Bolden to attack. Matt Bolden gives Gonzaga the lead again at 69-67. Freshman Burks loses it on the baseline. Bad play by Burks. Absolutely nowhere to go. Down two. We're right at three minutes to go. Recovers on the defensive end, though, to knock it away. Steve McLean has brought all the passion he can muster up in this ball game, stepping in for an absent Jeff Bezdelli. Can he deliver that passion one more time? Team point lead from the Buffaloes has evaporated in the second half. Last season, when Colorado lost 22 games, nine of those losses were by six points or fewer. The challenge for Steve McLean and the Buffaloes is turning that losing experience into wins. If you're prepared, if you have a great effort, if you have great enthusiasm, you, everybody's still got to walk on that court and play the game. And I think our kids found that, yeah, they might not have been as talented or as big and strong, but when they executed, they could get things done. And, and you know, then this summer we got bigger and stronger. We added some new players. And so they have a confidence now that they can win those games. We shall see. Look exactly where they are right now with 2.30 to go in this ball game. Gray loses the handle, gets it back, and then finds Harris. Default boards it. Higgins to a trailing default. Colorado still hasn't hit a three in the second half. After hitting seven in the first half, the game changed also defensively. Gonzaga doing a much better job in the second 20 minutes, getting the hands of the face of the shooter being there on the touch. Under two to go. Gray missing the three. Harris saves it. Elias Harris with a critical play for Gonzaga, giving the Bulldogs a chance to run some clock, run the set with a two-point lead. Goodson finds Harris, a cutting gray is fouled. Coming up on noon Maui time, we have a good one to start, to start the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational. The first of four today, coming up next at Cincinnati Vanderbilt, followed by Chaminade, Maryland, and then we cap it off at midnight Eastern time, Arizona versus Wisconsin. All part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Take a look at Mark Few on that sidelines. Is there a more battle-tested team in college basketball in the open floor for a guy like Higgins? Same situation for Gonzaga going to the free throw line. If Colorado can't get the steal and they have to commit a foul, it'll be two shots for Gonzaga. You hit either one. You hit both of them, rather. It's back to a two-possession game. So it's Gonzaga up by two now. Colorado, no timeouts. Gonzaga has one left with 4.6 remaining in regulation. And that one timeout for Gonzaga is very important because if they struggle to get the ball in bounds, don't risk a high school hairy pass. It could be a turnover. Take your timeout and come back over and talk about it again. Remember when Mark Few back in the sound bite in the first half, he talked about what does his team need to do to get better? Listen. They better have listened in this last timeout. Because I know this guy covered everything he could cover trying to protect a two-point lead with 4.6 to go. Bolden will inbound it. Colorado presumably will go for a quick steal. They can't get yeah. it. Yep. Get a foul. That is the plan. Bolden can run. He checks it with the official. Thinks about the bowling yeah. ball, and now they'll use the last timeout. Boy, yeah. that one timeout in the hip pocket. Critical for Gonzaga. Critical to have it and, and critical to make sure everyone understands it in the huddle. But mainly it, it's Bolden. That's the guy that has to know it because the basketball is in his hands. 
So now no timeouts and the pressure is in on Gonzaga to come with a different look to get the ball inbound. You think that's so simple Carter to close out a game and it's not especially early when you spent so many uh, much of your practice time in other areas now maybe Mark Few has drawn up something over there that they haven't even used yet. Can he draw it? Can they absorb it? And can they execute it? If they do they'll win this basketball game. And no coincidence that it's the senior leader, Matt Bolden, who has the basketball in his yep. hands on the baseline making those decisions. Plus, he has size. I wouldn't put Goodson there if he was on the floor because he's too small as an inbounds passer. You can take away his vision. Bolden's a guy you trust with his passing, with his high IQ, and with his experience. Look what those two older guys have done for Mark Few late. However, it's a Lennox who will... But uh, he's a size guy, so mm -hmm. that's good with guard skills. Freshman Olenek will inbound it. Trying to get it to Bolden. Here it is. Tomlinson commits the foul. Four seconds left. Bolden to the free throw line for two. It was Gibbs, I think, that was the inbounds guy, correct? Then he took it out for Gonzaga? Yes, it was, correct. Yeah. It's the redshirt freshman, Grant Gibbs. But he's, he's a 6'5 he's a kid. And Mark Few realizes that, you know, I, I want to make sure I get it in the hands of Gray or Bolden. So he was wasting Bolden out of bounds. There you go. 20 in the game now for Bolden. He's perfect from the line. Neither team has a timeout left. So Steve McClain has to communicate with his kids right now. If it is a miss. And it's, it's not. not. No. Two possession game again. Three from Higgins. Won't go. And Gonzaga comes back from 11 down at the half to survive a tough test from the Colorado Buffaloes. Gonzaga wins it 76 to 72. If Gonzaga hasn't already played at Michigan State, they don't win this ball game. All the experience, all the toughness, all the fire, all the competitiveness that they gained out of that ball game, they had to rely on in the second half to take down a very determined, a very focused, a very energized, passionate Colorado team today. 76-72 the final as Gonzaga survives the test from Colorado. Coming up next, more of the 2009 EA Sports Maui Invitational, Cincinnati versus Vanderbilt. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. Aloha from Maui. Now let's send you to ESPN News.